Hi there! Today I'm gonna show you a nice little offspin of the WSJTX software called WSJTX Improved. This is something that comes out of WSJTX being open source. And that means that others can freely improve on it and distribute what they got and that's what happened in this case. In here you can see a lot of information about the features, especially the features they want to highlight. I'm not gonna go through all of this because a lot of this is stuff I don't use or need, but for somebody it's going to be really useful. To get the software, go up here to Files, and then you'll see different versions. 2.7.1 is the most recent development edition of this, and from what I know, everything here is very development. There's nothing really stable about it. So, go in here. And in here you'll see Linux, Mac OS, Raspberry Pi, source code, and Windows 32-bit editions, as well as the Windows 64-bit editions below here that I'm gonna use. There are three different versions of it. There's one called Improved Plus, that's just the normal version of WSJTX, or the normal layout, with some additions to it. Then you have the Alternative Layout, or AL version. That's for smaller devices, such as a Surface Go tablet, or something that doesn't have widescreen, where real estate on the screen is really important. And um, it's a really nice layout, but if you have a widescreen, for example on a normal laptop, or you're sitting at home, then you have the widescreen edition, which is using a bit more real estate on the screen, but it is really nice to work, and this is my preferred edition of it. Downloading and installing this is just like any other version of WSJTX. You download it and then you select where to install it. One important thing when installing is to know that this will try to overwrite the normal WSJTX installation. So in here you can see I've installed it in three different other folders. I've done an alternative layout, the normal improved version and the widescreen one. And then I have normal WSJTX on top here. One important thing to note is that all of these share the same configuration, which is stored in the app data local WSJTX folder uh, in your user directory. So if you do config changes here, it will affect the others, and it will also affect the normal WSJTX installation. I think you can sort this out if you want to, but uh, please be aware of it, and uh, if you want to take a backup of it, just so it doesn't mess up your normal installation. Of course, QSOs and everything else is also shared between them. So when you want to start it, it's just as normal WSJTX. Either you use the shortcut, or you go into the binaries folder. In here, I'm going to go into the widescreen one, wide, bin, and in here you'll see wsjtx.exe, or the executable file. And this is what it looks like when you start it up. This is the widescreen edition, and you can see in here, this uh, band activity window is a lot longer than the normal one is, and there's a few new buttons. Here you can click buttons for the different modes, so if you want to switch to FT4, you can do this here, instead of going up here to the menu and clicking it here. Not a big thing, but it's really nice if you're hunting around for poster stations or something like that, which is using a lot of different modes. One really nice functionality here, something I've been wanting for a long time as a portable operator, is the ability to ignore a station. Whenever you're operating portable, some people are gonna hear you and you're gonna be really weak to them. That means that they're gonna set on, I want this station, then they're gonna click yes, enable TX and then they're gonna go make a cup of coffee and maybe have a nap or something like that while their station is still transmitting and trying to reach you. This means until they hear a reply, they will be blocking you from making QSOs with anybody else. In here now, you have a new button called ignore. That means that, say I got this station here, Hotel Bravo 40 Kilo, for example, which is the last one I tried having QSO with. When I click ignore for that person, that person is gonna be added to an ignore list. And I'm not gonna to respond to them. So for this to work, you have to go into filters here, and then select ignore station from ignore list. You can also see here you have ignore stations worked yesterday or today. Really helpful if you're running some sort of the expedition, something like that. You also have here hide stations from ignore list. That will actually hide them over here. 
And I'm going to show you a bit more something called filters later. That's uh, something of the same as this, but not as flexible. If you want to remove somebody from the ignore list, from what I can see, you can only clear the entire thing. So go here, file, and then erase ignore list. That will remove everybody from that ignore list, and you would have to add them back in again. I would love for this to be timed. Basically saying that, hey, ignore this guy for the next five or ten minutes, because that's usually gonna solve the issue for me, at least with portable operations. I know that there are other use cases for this as well, but at least for portable ops, having a timed ignore would be really nice. So let's go over and try to do some QSOs. I'm on FT4 on 20 meters, running 15 watts with a G90. And as you can see here on the band scope, it's not very crowded. Uh, FT8 was a bit too crowded for running low power today. So say I would like to TX down here just on below 1500. Usually you would have to click something like this and then go down here and click up and that would move your TX frequency as well. Here you can just uh, right click where you want TX to be or left click where you want RX to be. So if I want to hear this strong station here and I want to TX to him over here for some reason, maybe that part of the band is really noisy, then you can do that and it will move it over there. So let's see if we can reach this guy here, Papa Delta 5 Mike Victor Hotel. And yes, he could hear me. And as you can see, when I'm TXing, the progress bar down here is red. Just a little visual indicator that you're sending and not receiving. Really nice little thing. And apparently I'm not really easy to hear today. Band conditions are like they've been lately, not perfect. That finally got him. I had to move over to his frequency and increase power a bit. Now, when I'm going to click OK here, you're going to notice that his call sign disappears and the grid disappears. This is really helpful when you're running a grid tracker next to it, because this red line here, it uh, is depending on these two fields being populated. So I click OK here, those are going to disappear. And also all of the standard generated messages that were generated for that call sign is going to go away. Another really nice thing that sadly isn't completely finished is dark mode. So when you go into here, view, use dark style, then it's going to change over to everything being dark. It's not perfect. As you can see here, the colors are not perfectly set up. White on yellow isn't a good readable text, same with white on green but I'm sure that's possible to tweak if you like this. I'm certainly gonna do some more tweaking to get this working properly. The settings menu is where a lot of these big changes are hiding. Go into file, settings, and in here you'll see that there's a lot of more choices than you would normally get in WSJTX. As I said, I'm not gonna cover all of this, but I do encourage you to have a look and go in here and see what it's for. And just hover your mouse cursor over it and you'll see some description about what it is. As you can see, I've checked quite a lot of these. So um, this is not the default setup, but um, it's a lot of nice things in here. So uh, firstly, blank line between decoding periods and showing the blank line with the timestamp. That's these gray lines you can see behind here. And basically they just give you a small intermission and showing you, hey, they, these are from the previous period and these are from the new one. Really nice to keep track of time and so on. Down on behavior, there are a few nice ones. The turn progress bar red while transmitting is nice to turn on. I really like that thing. It's not a big one, but still it's just so nice to have on. Down on additional features, this is where the biggest things are. For example, declare DX call and grid after each QSO, showing the distance uh, when people send their grid. That's really helpful. Uh, then you can start to get a picture about like how far can I reach or is this a person I can reach at all. Also, if you have a rotor, showing the azimuth in messages that have grid can be really helpful. That turns it up here. In here, you also see the erase band activity window after band change. That's a really helpful thing. When I'm changing bands, I don't want to see all of the messages from the previous band. 
So uh, this one, when I then go in, in here, click OK, and I just, for example, switch over to 17 meters, then everything disappears. And then you go back to 20 meters and it disappears again. So it's a really nice feature. I would love for this to be expanded so it works between modes as well. Over at the radio tab, there's not that many differences. This radio I run with Vox, it's an old G90 and I don't have a serial adapter for it. But as you see here, most of the settings are the same. Difference down here, you have a Hamlib and you can choose 64 or 32 bit and updating it or reverting it. And then you can also see there's some rig data stuff here. So for example, you can go in and stop TX with high SWR if your radio supports it. For example, if you select the wrong antenna or something like that. Within uh, audio, TX macros, reporting, frequencies and colors, there are no big changes. In advanced, you do have some cloud log features. So if you're logging, you can actually log directly to cloud log. Nice little feature as well for those who need it. The last tab I'm gonna show you is the filters list. And this is something that I've been wanting to have for a long time. In here, you can go in and blacklist either call signs or words. Say there's a station you know you don't want to do, have a QSO with for some reason. You can go in here and just add them as a blacklisted station. You can also add words. So say there's a test going on, CQ test, and you're not interested in doing contests. You can go in here and add test as a keyword that's banned really helpful and it helps clear out your activity window. Note that this is not going to remove it from the band scope. This is of course processed after it goes through the band scope and you still need to know where you can RX and TX. So in here, blacklisting, really helpful thing, similar to the ignore list I showed you earlier. Whitelisting, if you're hunting for only one station, say there's a de-expedition and you only want to see that call sign and not all of the other persons trying to call it. So say my club station was going down to Bouvet Island to do a little field expedition, something like that. Then you'd hook off here, whitelist, and enter, for example, three Yankee Fort Charlie, which would be Lima Alpha Fort Charlie operating from Bouvet Island. And then that would be the only thing you see. Nothing else. Really helpful. Another thing, always pass, that bypasses these two filters above here. So there's a, um, uh, so say you want to see, for example, all POTA and all SOTA stations here. Really nice to always pass those through. Then you can say, apply this only to call signs. Of course, then SOTA, POTA and TEST wouldn't be applied. Uh, unless somebody is using those call sign. And uh, this use filters for weight in pounds only. That means that those filters won't be applicable when you're running CQ and people are calling you. So when I click OK now and save this, then you'll see that this receiving window down here, it turns blue, showing you that filters are active. Then, uh, as you will see now on this session, there's not going to be any three Yankee four charges sending, so I'm not going to receive anything. So let's go back to settings and then just turn these off again. And you will see that this turns green and there's no filters. Everything is shown. The last thing I want to show you is the alternative layout. And this, as I said, it's made for smaller displays such as non 16 by nine displays. As you can see here, this is something you can fit into a very small piece of screen real estate, especially if you remove the graph on top here. Not sure why you would do that, but uh, some people prefer to do that. And you can fit this in, in a very small screen and operate as well. So that is great. You have all of the same functionality as you did with the widescreen one. And at least for this laptop, I prefer using the widescreen one, but still this is a great option. So to summarize, this is something I really recommend you trying out. It's a great improvement on the normal WSJTX, and I would love for some of this functionality to be migrated back into the main client, basically because this is useful for everybody that uses this piece of software. As you can see, everything here isn't fully feature ready, 
but this is free software, it's open software, and it's being actively developed by somebody on their spare time. That's really nice, and a big thank you to Delta Golf 2 Yankee Charlie Bravo for making this. This is an amazing addition to the tool set we use as ham radio operator. I hope this was interesting. Thank you very much for watching. 7-3.